seen on guitars, by the way. I have seen the inside of a guitar like this before. Uh, the sales office is also part of the customer service office, so every day when they get the guitars in for repair or service, there's some doozies that come in. And it's truly amazing what the repair department is able to do uh, in terms of a guitar that has either fallen apart, been underwater in certain cases. We have people that have, you know, practice rooms in their basements, and then all of a sudden the boiler breaks and gets flooded out. And we have technicians on staff who can rebuild just about anything. I don't think they've ever turned away a repair. Uh, unless you send us a box of sawdust, we really will, uh, <laughs> we can fix just about anything. So let's talk about some of the things that make a Taylor guitar unique um, to among brands that are out there. Uh, one of the first <coughs> things I'm going to show you is our finish. It's a polyester based finish and it's ultraviolet cured. So basically what happens is years ago when they built guitars, they would use a lacquer finish on the guitars um, or a nitrocellulose finish and you'd spray the guitar down and you'd have to dry it. And it would take quite a while to dry guitars. So while the neck department was busy carving necks and putting necks away, once these guitars are sprayed, they would have to sit on a shelf until they were dry. So when you're building three guitars a day or, you know, 20 guitars a day, it's fine. You have the space for these guitars to dry and cure. When you start building 300 guitars a day, you need a lot of room to store 300 guitar bodies while they're drying. So what we came up with is using an ultraviolet cured finish. And what this does is it gets sprayed on, goes into an ultraviolet booth, just the body itself, not the neck, they go in separately. And it takes about four 20-second passes of the light, just goes around, and it comes out dry to the touch, ready to be buffed. So now we have a body assembly and finish assembly that matches our neck assembly. So these guitars can move right along throughout the factory and be built at the same time, and put together at the same time. So no more waiting for guitars to dry. Uh, that was a big finish. And a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, the innovations in the guitars, are things that were kind of necessary when you ramp up production you need to solve problems. So a lot of these innovations that Bob has come up with are the result of problem solving. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is how our guitars are braced. Every acoustic guitar has bracing on the inside. And by bracing, I'm talking about these pieces of wood that are attached to the top. They reinforce the top, because if you did not have any braces on here, this wood is fairly thin. It would be more apt to break. If you put any pressure on it, it would certainly crack. The braces also determine the sound of the guitar. Um, they determine where the top is going to vibrate. <coughs> so if you were to move these braces up or down a little bit here, you're going to totally change the sound of the guitar. So what we use is what we call a forward shifted X bracing. The X brace is the main brace of the guitar. It's used in the majority of acoustic guitars. Um, when you look at a nylon string guitar, it uses something called fan bracing. And in fan bracing, they kind of jut out from underneath the sound hole. There's about five or six braces that come out, kind of like in a fan pattern. Like picture your hand going down like this. That's how that's braced. Um, but for acoustic steel string guitars, they're generally reinforced with an X brace. We shift ours forward. It allows the resonation of the lower bout, where most of the bass response comes from, to really get that deep uh, projection out of the guitar right here. And it also focuses your mid-range here. Taylors are known for having a really bright, crystal clear sound, um, very easy to record, very well balanced guitars. And a lot of that is due to our bracing pattern inside the guitar. Next thing is our relief route. In through here, if you take a look at this later on, or maybe you can see it from there, there's a little cut right along the edge of the top here. Okay? And basically what that does is, when you strum a guitar, if you think about the guitar as a speaker itself, the back and sides of the amplifier of the guitar, the top would be the speaker, we consider the speaker. So when you strum a guitar, the top vibrates and goes from the center out, and it goes to about there typically. And what happens is it gets stiff here because there's all sorts of reinforcement along the edge of the guitar. This is called kerfing. And this reinforces where the sides meet the uh, back and top of the guitar. So the wood gets stiffer here. If I were to put pressure here, I'd be more likely to crack it here than I would be over here. Just it's strong and it's reinforced here. By putting that little relief route in there, we found we got some more vibration out of the top. So now where the vibrations would typically die off around here, where it gets stiff, we're able to get it much closer to the edge of the guitar and get more sound, more bass response, and more projection out of that. And that's on all our Taylor guitars now is this relief route. It's patented in here. It actually comes from violin making. Uh, violin makers would grab what they call graduating the top. So they'd have it thick in the middle, and as it got closer to the edge, they'd thin it out. Just made for a better sound of the uh, violin. So we found by putting in this laser cut, it's much more consistent than hand graduating the tops. So obviously, you have you know, 300 tops a day that you need to do. It's much easier to put a laser cut, and you're going to get a much more consistent result by doing that. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is how we amplify our guitars. Um, Anyone here have an older Taylor guitar with a Fishman system in it? You have an older, okay. Most of our new guitars will have what we call our ES, or expression system, in the guitar. 
and that's how we amplify our guitars. The older guitars, the Fishman guitars, which we call them, they would have a you know, control usually on the side of the guitar, is a traditional way of amplifying acoustic guitars. It uses a piezo saddle underneath the bridge, which really generally picks up the sound of the strings, not so much the sound of the back and sides or the top of the guitar. Now, for those of you who play acoustically, you, you know if you strum a maple guitar versus a rosewood guitar versus a mahogany guitar, they're all going to sound a little different. So, piezo pickup doesn't really pick up the nuances of the, each particular wood combination. Bob loves the way his sound, guitar sounded unamplified, but amplified it wasn't good enough for him. And they were, on our higher line guitars, they did have a microphone in them also, so it would be an understaddle transducer coupled with a microphone, which gives you a little bit more of a natural sound of the guitar. What we wanted to do is eliminate that understaddle transducer <coughs> and eliminate that microphone inside. So Bob got together with Rupert Neve, um, who is considered the godfather of the preamp. He's in responsible for some of the best recording consoles of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, probably about at least 60% of the albums that are out there were probably recorded on a Neve console. Uh, most high-end studios will have a Neve console in there. So we got together with Rupert Neve and designed our expression system. It's a three pickup system, actually. And what you have is a pickup that sits underneath the neck, right there. The stack single coil, so it's a noise canceling pickup. And you also have these two body sensors. Okay, this is not a pickup here, this is actually a string ground, and I'll touch on that in a second. Um, so you have the two body sensors, which actually act as little microphones. They pick up the vibrations of the top, coupled with the string sound, where the magnetic pickup picks up the strings, and you do get a natural sound out of the guitar now. So these are picking up what the guitar should sound like. They're picking up the vibrations of the back, sides, and top together. Um, it all gets blended together and makes it sound like an acoustic guitar should. Well, we had that, that came out in 2003, and last year in 2007 we made a couple of changes. First thing we did was change it to over to a 9 volt battery. Uh, the older systems were AA batteries. Uh, we found we got a little more battery life out of the 9 volt battery, and most musicians use a 9 volt battery. I know when I open up my gig bag and I have all my effects pedals and everything else in there, they all take 9 volt batteries, not double A's. So we went to a 9 volt battery. <coughs> We put a string ground on your guitar. Um, the guitar is one of the few electronic instruments or electronic devices that actually uses a human as the ground. For any of you who have done a gig before, and this is especially true with electric guitars, um, single coil electric guitars in particular, when you take your hands off the strings, sometimes you'll get a buzz and you put your hand on the strings and it gets quiet. That's because you're the ground. Any other item in your home uses a three-pronged plug and uses the electrical system of your house as a ground. Um, which can be proved to be dangerous with the guitar. Um, there's this thing called the blue shock, and if any of you have ever gigged out before in an older building or maybe you know, even in a newer building sometime where the electric's not up to snuff, you'll have your guitar and you go to reach in and sing to the microphone and you get this little shock that jumps across. That's because the, the um, PA system is trying to use you as a ground through your guitar. Well, that's not too good. Um, there's actually people that die from that each year not so much in the U.S. where we use a 110, but over in Europe where they use a 230 volt system, you can get quite a little shock from there. Um, so people do actually die from that, and that's not good. So <laughs> what we did is we actually have a fuse string ground in there. So if that does happen and the voltage is enough to hurt you, uh, the fuse will pop, and you'll find that the ES system will still work, and you'll still be alive to play another game. Yeah. So we did that. Um, we also put in these two little switches. You can see inside there where my finger is right there. There's two small little switches, and this is on all new two, 2007 and newer ES systems. What these do, they turn on and off each one of these body sensors. Now, the ES system is a high-fidelity system because you are picking up the total range of the guitar, not just the range of the strings. So what would happen is if you played in a wedding band or a club date band or you know some type of nine-piece orchestra and you want to play acoustic guitar, with the ES, it's got a very wide dynamic range to it. So you have this wide, you know, if you think about Here's your flute, and maybe your soprano saxophone over here, and here's your bass drum, your bass guitar, and you have a conga player over here, and then you have your electric guitar, your singer, and some other instruments right in here. Well, the acoustic guitar is capable of producing quite a wide range of frequencies, so it can kind of get a little bit washed out in the mix in a big band situation. By turning off the body sensors, you're cutting down on the low frequencies with the lower bout sensor, and the higher frequencies on the higher sensor, and you're focusing pretty much on the string sound using the magnetic pickup. So it brings your range from here and tightens it and focuses it and makes the sound project a lot more in a big, you know, in a big band mix. 
So we added those in there to do that. And it also allows you to really dial in the sound you want. 